Hello and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Believe it or not, but this is our 56th episode and today we are very happy to have, once again, Lisa White, Hi. the Swansea Dog Officer, who also serves the town of Somerset. Yes. Hello, how are you again? Good to see you again. Long time no see, happy to be back. Glad to have you, we're always happy to see you. <laughs> Lisa, what's happening in the animal world? Ah, starting to get busy. Springtime's coming around. Um, fortunately, through COVID, we've been pretty quiet at the animal shelter. Um, quiet on that front. We have not, you know, had a lot of dogs or cats. It's been fairly quiet. Um, and what we have had, we've been able to um, remain open by um, appointment with approved application. So, you know, the public hasn't really been coming in and out, but we have been posting animals. So if um, we have an animal up for adoption, we ask the adopter to submit an application. Once the application is approved, um, we invite in for meet and greet. So that way we're limiting how many people are in the building at one time, the, the, the big traffic flow. So um, thankfully, we've been pretty quiet. It's been manageable, um, but we miss seeing everyone. We definitely, we, we've put off... Um, our yard sale, um, again, we're probably looking maybe fall, but I really think if we're being realistic, we're looking at spring of 2022 to start up with our yard sales again. We miss seeing everyone. We miss, you know, having people stop by, say hi. Um, but we're, we're getting through. We're doing good. Are people relinquishing their animals? We have been really fortunate. Um, we were really worried that with the onset of COVID and, you know, we're watching the terrible, terrible news about, you know, how people were getting sick and passing away or being hospitalized for so long. We were really, um, we were planning on a big flow of animals coming into the shelter. Um, and thankfully, um, we've been relatively quiet. We've had some cats, you know, with owners who have passed away or gone into nursing facilities, um, been surrendered to us by family members. But um, for the most part, we have been very, very fortunate. We've, we've not gotten that real inflow of animals. So it, it, we've been lucky. Can people come to, we, we don't want an influx. Right. But can people come and uh, bring cat food and dog sure. food? Sure, we are still taking donations. Still taking um, donations? Yes, we still take donations. Um, you know, we're there. Even though we're close to the public, animal control works every day, Monday through Sunday. Um, we're on call around the clock for emergencies. We are still working at the shelter. Uh, we're working with a small number of trained volunteers who um, know the routine and come in on a regular basis. Um, we just have to limit how many are in there, but we're still taking donations. Um, we have a big wagon out by the door, or we tell people if they come by, you know, when we're not there, just leave by the door. We are in and out all day. So, yep, we are still taking donations. Can, like, younger people that want to volunteer, uh, is that program still going? Um, volunteers have always been over 18. Okay. Um, we've... We right now we're kind of at a lull. We haven't opened up to new volunteers just yet. We're hoping to start doing that as we get closer to summer, um, and we can maybe introduce a little more. You know, the the restrictions with COVID get a little bit more lenient. We're hoping. Um, as I said, we're working with probably a handful, five, six maybe, um, trained volunteers who are come in throughout the day. So we have to space them apart. So we don't have, you know, too many people in the building at once. Um, and they know the routine. So, you know, we don't have to follow closely behind them, teaching them how to do stuff. We can all, you know, keep our safe distance from one another. So generally speaking, things are on the upswing. Uh, yeah, I think so. I hope so. I really do. We, we miss everyone. Talk about coyotes. <laughs> I was reading something in the news this morning about coyotes, and uh, I wanted you to sure. share your it's, thoughts. It's springtime. Um, the coyote calls, the fox calls, the raccoon calls, the possum, anything wildlife related um, picks up between now and, you know, especially through early summer. Um, you have mating season starts 
with coyotes January, February. Um, so you do see the coyotes out and about more. Um, everybody thinks that they are nocturnal. They are not. Um, they don't hibernate, so they're active year round. And they are out, although they are out more, you know, nighttime at, at dusk and, you know, dawn. Um, they will come out during the day, especially near mating season. Um, after they have their pups, they're looking more frequently for food. So they are out, you know, you will see them out and about during the day. Um, and, you know, we always tell people, small pets, yes, keep your cats indoors. Keep your small dogs, you know, monitored outside. You never, especially this time of year, want to leave them out unattended. Um, mating season, the coyotes get certainly more aggressive. Um, and, and they will, unfortunately, they will go after a small dog. They will go after your house cat. Um, so, you know, cats safely, if you can leave them indoors, they're much safer indoors. Um, and small dogs. Um, definitely, you want to leash walks, watch them out in a fenced yard. Um, but, you know, we tell people if you see them, if they frequent your yard more than others, you know, if you live in a wooded area, you will see them. We see them, the bushy road area, Gardner's Neck, um, anywhere where there's a lot of woods, water, you see them. Um, make a lot of noise. You know, if you consistently harass them with pot and pan covers, um, whistles, clap your hand, yell, wave your arms around. Um, I will say your neighbors probably won't like you, but a boat horn works really good. An air horn works really good. Um, you know, and if you do that on a consistent basis, we find that most of the time they don't want to be around you as much as you don't want them around you, and, and they will tend to find other areas. But they're not, they don't like people, but they will sit in a distance and watch. Um, they're, they can be nosy and curious too. Um, but, you know, for people wise, for the most part, unless they're sick, um, they're not too big of a threat with people. You know, we just say that you make noise. And, and if you find that it is one that is particularly hanging around um, and becoming somewhat of a, of a threat, we always recommend that you de contact the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And they can certainly walk you through and see what's going on. But they are not cute little dogs. <laughs> they are not dogs. Right. Please People don't, are, no. Please think don't. Think they're German shepherds no, or please, something. Please, please don't feed them. Don't leave food out for them. Don't, um, don't. If you see young pups around, please don't try to approach them. Uh, you do more harm than good. They, they don't need to be fed. Um, they hunt for their food, and they learn. The pups learn to hunt for their food. Um, we tell people with any kind of wildlife, you are not doing them any favor by handling them, touching them, trying to approach them, trying to make them your friend. Please let them be wild and leave them alone. And that's very important. It is. It is. Even w I have a friend who was on the show once, a few sessions back, who uh, lives in Rochester, and she has... She raises chickens and yep. hens yes. and everything. And she's had a lot of problems with coyotes yep. in rural yep. areas. Yep. Many of her prized winning roosters yep. have been killed. Yeah, they're a food source. They and, are. And once they know where that food source is, they want to keep coming back. And she said there is one that comes all the time mm -hmm. looking for a chicken dinner. Yep, all the time. If they know they're there, they'll be back. What about fishers? Um, we haven't had too many calls this year with fishers. They come and go. Um, we've had one or two. Uh, they you will see mostly out at night. Um, on occasion, you'll see them out wandering around during the day. Um, again, chickens, if you have um, a coop, you know, they will try to dig their way in. Um, they, will, they will kill chickens. They will go after a cat. Um, so yeah, I actually had a good friend's cat killed by a fisher. So, um, you know, keep your distance. Again, make noise. Um, scare them away. You know, don't, you don't want to be leaving food out for them. And we tell people um, not to leave food sources outside. A lot of people will feed their cats outside and leave food out all the time. 
that will draw in all kinds of wildlife. If you're going to feed your cat outside, put their food down, pick it up. Don't leave it out because um, it will draw the birds and that will draw the raccoons and that will draw the skunks and you'll have a whole wildlife a menagerie <laughs> in your backyard. <laughs> You have some thoughts some to share. Yeah, we always tell people, you know, um, this time of year, coyotes. Um, this time of year, you will see raccoons, which are normally, you know, out at night. You will start to see them out on occasion during the day, for sure. Um, again, mating season, um, we're getting to the time of year where babies are being born. So they are out again more frequently looking for food. Um, so, you know, it doesn't mean they necessarily have rabies that they're out during the day. Um, certainly, if any of them look like they're stumbling around, um, they look sick, certainly call animal control and we'll come out and take a look and see what's going on. But um, they're looking for places to have their babies. Um, so chimneys, definitely want to make sure your chimneys are capped off. They love to go into chimneys. Um, they love to go into the eaves. They love eaves and houses. Um, even under porches, you know, if you have... Um, <coughs> covered wood piles. They, they like to go into these little covered areas. So, you know, you want to make sure that those areas are fixed so they can't get in them. Um, and we always tell people baby raccoons are the cutest little things in the whole wide world. Please don't touch them. Um, if you come across what you think is an abandoned litter of cubs, or, um, you know, you find them left alone, please, 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 please do not touch them. They carry a host of zoonotic diseases. Um, they are potential carriers of rabies. Um, they carry raccoon roundworm, which is just disgusting and can affect people and, and, and it can affect people in a pretty detrimental way. Um, so we, we wanna tell people, while, you know, they are cute, if you think they're abandoned or you think they're injured, um, please call us. Call Animal Control. We'll come out and take a look. Or if you can't get us, you can always contact, you know, wildlife rehabbers. Do not touch. Please, please, please don't touch. You not only put yourself in danger, but if those animals do turn out to be healthy and not abandoned, by handling them, you've put them in danger. So you, you don't... And they most likely would have to be euthanized. They would. Um, you know, if, if you, and we say if for any reason, if there's that small, small reason that you have to move them, please handle them with gloves that are like welding gloves. And, and even then, we, we say strongly, do, don't touch them. Just call us. Um, if we think that they need to be moved, we will move them properly um, because you will put them, you know, the state will say if someone has handled them with bare hands, um, the rule is they need to go out for testing. So you put them in danger. So just call us. Um, most of the time they're not abandoned. Mom is nearby somewhere. Mom will wait off in the distance, although mama raccoons are mean. Um, so you probably don't want to be near her babies if she's around. Um, but just call us any questions, you know, and we'll come out and take a look. And if we think there is something that needs to be explored for, uh, further, we go to the people who are more expert than us. We go to the wildlife rehabbers. What are the Fox, you'll start to see fox this time of year. Um, and then come early summer, you will see their little pups running around. Um, there are a lot of foxes in my area. Is there, yeah, they like to, um, again, they like to, we find every year at least 10 people have foxes making dens under their sheds. Um, so, you know, you will see them out. You'll see the babies come out and play. Again, we just recommend, you know, a fox isn't necessarily going to hurt a big human being. Um, they're much smaller than what everybody thinks. They weigh 7 to 15 pounds usually. Um, we just, again, recommend, you know, if you see them, clap hands, bang some metal pot and pan covers together. Um, the more uncomfortable you make them to be around you, the less likely they will be around you. Um, and again, uh, baby foxes are super cute. All baby wildlife is super cute. Don't touch them. Again, you put them in more harm. And don't feed them. And don't feed them. They have to learn to hunt. If you're feeding them, they'll never learn to hunt for their own food. So we, we never, never, never feed wildlife. Never.
they're pretty good on their own. Um, possums are a big one this time of year. Um, they're, they're getting ready to have their babies. Um, we always tell people, you know, if, if you come across one, usually we come across them when they're deceased, hit by car. And um, we have Which a lot of Which is very people. prevalent these days. It is, yeah, yeah, they're, they're just, they can't run across the street, so they waddle across the street. So yeah, this, this time of year especially, you'll see a lot, you know, in the road. Um, and you'll have those people who will stop and check because they have pouches. They are the only marsupial in um, this part in the, in the United States. Um, and they can have anywhere between like one and 13 babies. So um, people will stop and check the pouch. Um, sometimes those babies in the pouch are still alive. So um, if you see that, you know, give us a call. We come out, we scoop them up. Um, and this time of year, we make a lot of trips to the wildlife rehabbers, and, and it's usually with um, baby possums. Um, they stay in the pouch, I think, for about eight weeks, and then they start climbing around on mom's back, and mom travels. Where are there wildlife rehab centers in this um, area? In this area, probably you're looking at your closest. Um, you have Tufts Wildlife Clinic in North Grafton, which they are more for um, injured wildlife. And then you have um, New England Wildlife down in Weymouth. Okay. Um, they're probably your closest. Um, so that's normally where we go. There is another big one out on the Cape. Um, and then the mass.gov site has a really good website. If you go to the mass.gov site and in the search box, if you type wildlife rehabilitator, it will come up with a map and um, there'll be icons, you know, there'll be one for mammals, one for birds, for different species, reptiles. Um, and if you click on them, it will give you where, you know, it'll, they're on the map and it will come up with a phone number. Um, we have one girl in Taunton who is probably our closest that will do um, possums, squirrels, stuff like that. Um, but she's only one person and she gets really busy. So um, usually it's the bigger places that, you know, you have to travel to. Um, again, you know, uh, there's a good songbird rehabilitator right in Berkeley. Um, she takes a lot of injured or um, a baby birds that appear to be injured. She takes those. Um, she's got a great website to look at um, with tons she of She might be great for the show. She would, yes. Um, a Place for Wild Birds, uh, Kathy Frisbee. Um, she, she's super interesting. Um, her website has a lot of great things on there. You know, the first thing someone wants to do when they find a baby bird is give it water. Um, you're probably going to kill it if you give it water. Um, they aspirate. The only thing that she recommends you feed are, um, pieces of blueberry, uh, frozen berries, something like that. Um, she, her website is great. She's got, so anybody who finds an orphan baby bird or what they think is an orphan baby bird, uh, look at her website. Um, she's got a lot of good information on there. And um, she, she does take in a lot this time of year. Um, she's got a contact phone number. She's really good at returning calls. So um, if you find a need, it is a place for wild birds. Um, and she'd be great on the show. She would. You yes. should give her a call. Um, the mass.gov has a great site. Um, the MSPCA has a really good site. The Animal Rescue League of Boston. Um, they all have a site that will list. Some of them, you know, have a breakdown of what to do if you find this. And it'll give you like a map. If it's doing this, do this. If it's not doing this. Um, but most importantly, you know, for the most part, you want to leave alone. If you think something's, you know, in imminent danger, you know, give us a call. We usually respond or can respond fairly quickly. Um, you know, normally we can get to somewhere within 20 minutes to a half hour. Um, so it's not worth someone getting bit by a wild animal um, or touching something that might be diseased and, um, you know, Poten potentially picking up something that is contagious to humans. So um, give us a call. There, like I said, there's, there's plenty of good information out on the website. Um, we'll get towards early, pretty soon we'll start getting, oh, the baby deer is alone on the side of the road. 
Um, there are a lot of deer in Swansea. There are, and we tell people we had one just last year that talk was, about that. That was right by the shelter. Um, more than likely, baby deers are not abandoned. Their mother does not stay with them to protect them. She's nearby. She's watching. But if you see a fawn, you know, laying in a grassy area, anywhere, leave it alone. Um, mom's usually somewhere nearby watching, and their coat is like camouflage. So they blend in, and they don't move for their own protection. Um, they stay very still so other predators don't notice them. Um, so do not approach a baby deer. Um, you can watch safely from a distance. Again, if there's a concern, um, you can call animal control. You can call a, a wildlife rehabilitation um, place, and they will certainly give you information as to what to do or not to do. Um, but mom is usually nearby. Nine out of 10 times, most of the time when babies are, whether it be baby deer, um, baby fox, baby raccoon, um, most of the time, their mother is nearby. Same thing with baby bunnies. We get this time of year, um, the dogs or the lawnmower has uncovered a baby bunny nest. Um, the safest place for those baby bunnies to go back is back into that nest. Um, mom comes to the nest twice a day, usually dawn and dusk. She doesn't stay there for reason to protect her babies. Um, so she is off in the distance watching they're safest there, uh, unless they're injured. You know, we have a, a lot of lawnmowers we have accidents with. Certainly if they're injured um, badly, we would take them. Um, but if you come across them, put them back in that nest, cover them back up, and leave them alone. Um, they are best with their parents. Baby bunnies don't really do that well with rehab. Um, so the best place for them is with their parents, if that can be. Um, as with all wildlife, you know, just most of it's okay. Leave it alone. Watch from a safe distance. And if there's a question, don't touch it. Call somebody because you put yourself at danger and you put that animal at danger. What else do you have? Oh, that, uh, that's, I think, think we've covered. We've covered the deer. Uh, we've covered the raccoons, the coyotes. Oh, it's skunk season too. Yay. <laughs> Um, we have had a, a, quite a few sick skunks this year. Um, and why is that? Uh, we, we have been working with um, the USDA who's been picking up either any of our um, rabies vector animals, which is primarily like the raccoons um, and the skunks, anything that we've either had to have euthanized because it's been sick or we find hit by car or just deceased. Um, and they've been picking up and testing for rabies. Um, everything that we've had tested to date has not tested positive. Um, could be distemper. We haven't tested to see what it is, but the skunks that we've been finding um, or picking up that have been sick display symptoms that are similar to distemper. So it could be a distemper outbreak among the skunks. Um, again, this time of year, you're getting into May, June, you will see the baby skunks out and they do stumble around. Skunks just walk funny. Um, so again, we say leave them alone. Don't touch them because they are cute too. Um, but, you know, again, it, even with the skunks, if you think that one is acting strange, give us a call. We had one that I didn't think was acting strange this week. We left it and then I got a call to come back again. And on that call, he was definitely more sick than he was the half hour before he changed that quickly so we did take him um don't touch them again they carry a host of zoonotic diseases as well um just give us a call we don't mind taking a look coming out um and if it's not how a many concern, staff members do you have right now there is um myself uh full-time i have um joni who's the assistant animal control officer. Um, she's there Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and whenever else I need her, she's always there for me. Um, and right now we are down to one on-call animal control officer on the weekend. Um, Ashley, she, she's coming back this week. She was out. She was hurt at her other job, but um, she'll be back this week. So it's me and Joni throughout the week. Um, I work Monday through Friday, uh, 
20 around clock for emergencies. Joni is at the shelter to help me um, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays, and whenever I have her in between. Um, and Ashley works the weekends. Do you get called her in the night? Yes. Yeah. For yeah, we go out for, you know, weekends and overnights, you know, anything after 5 o'clock, we're on call for emergency only, um, which could mean... You know, I've been called out at 2 o'clock in the morning for a possum hit by car still alive. Um, we do go out for, you know, any domestic animal or a wild animal that is injured during the night. Um, so we will come out for that. Um, if someone finds a dog after hours, um, we and the police department calls us, we do go out and pick up that animal. Um, obviously, any, you know, fire, emergency type where we might need, they might need us um, if someone's in the house, you know, sick or having a heart attack and they can't get in because of a dog or something, they'll call us for that. We'll go out for any emergency like that. Um, car accidents on the highway at night, if there's an animal in the car and, you know, they need someone to remove that animal from the car um, because a family member can't come pick it up, then we'll come out for that. So yeah, we are on call for emergencies. Um, we do get called out a lot. I always joke around and I say both police departments must have a drone over my house. Um, lately, every time I sit down to eat dinner, the phone rings and I say they must just see me sitting down. There must be something in my chair that goes off when I sit down to eat dinner. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we do go out after hours for emergencies. Um, so certainly, you know, if there's something going on that we're required, I've asked out. you this before, but I'm going to ask again. Mm -hmm. How can people help you? Oh boy, um, to they can improve what the great work you do. Sure, um, it's always important, you know. Um, dogs, wear your collars with your tags, with your rabies tag and your dog license. Um, if you can have your pet microchipped, have it microchipped. Um, those three things. If your animal ends up with us helps us get that pet back to you soon, very soon. Um, recently, we picked up a handful of dogs that are microchipped, but they're not registered. If we can trace the chip back to a facility that implemented the chip um, via, you know, if it's a rescue, then we can normally track down the owner that way because the rescue will have that information. Um, but we find a lot of chips come from either breeders who chip and don't register because it's up to the owner to register or um, pets that are bought at puppy stores. You know, I don't think there's too many of those anymore, but um, I say they're your kind of puppy milk kennel dogs. Yeah. Um, wear your tags. License your dog. Um, it is law. Um, it's state law to have your dog vaccinated for rabies, for them to be licensed in their town. Um, so if they wear those tags, it helps us get them home a lot quicker. So yeah, that's a big help um, because then we, your dog doesn't have to spend hours, at, days at the shelter sometimes. Um, we get them home to you. So Very it's good. a big help. Well, we are being told Our that we're- old. That went by so that fast. That we'll have to have you back for another <laughs> right? session. That it's always good to see you. Thank and it's you. it's always fun for, to be here. It was thank nice you to for see sharing you. all this great information. And it's very important information. It is, yes. Um, like I said, great websites, mass.gov, MSPCA, ARL Boston, anywhere in their search box. You can type wildlife rehabilitator and you will come up with um, a boatload of information to look at and learn from. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. And it was good to see you. Nice to see you. 56 episodes at Fur Fins Yay. and Feathers, and we will continue. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and have a good week.